You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, and streaming live on Ustream, this is AfterBuzz TV for the Glee Project. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest Glee Project news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, picking up where the show leaves off, and the buzz continues, it's After Buzz TV for the Glee Project! Hey everybody, Tamara Burke here with Michelle Macedo and Bill Svitek. We are talking about... Hello. Yes, I'm here. (laughs) We are talking about the Glee Project today um, with the theme of believability. We've got... Five contestants left on the show. Now, Michelle, you have you seen the Glee Project before? Is this your first episode you've ever seen? No, I've seen bits and pieces, but this okay. is my first full episode. Okay, so there. And Phil, you've seen a few episodes. This will be my third consecutive. Oh, okay. There you go. You, you weren't with us last week. Yeah, I was. Sexuality. Really? That, you, I thought Ben ran it last week. No, I could no. be. I'm probably confused. No, he ran bit. Intervention. He, okay, I'm confused. You know, Phil okay. blends in a lot of the time. He does, I don't he notice. Does. Last week, either. Cameron was voted off. Yeah, no, I know. I was there. And I was here. <laughs> I and I was here not... talking about how how I was right, and no one believed me. Okay. Oh, Is that what like happened? always. Oh, okay. That's so sad for you. Okay, but right, but uh, <laughs> just to just to appease the fans, I love everyone on Glee. Woo! No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. So we have five contestants left. We've got Hannah, Samuel, Alex, Lindsay, and Damien. And I think I was saying last week, um, th- now th- this is the time where it just it's it's just painful from here on out. <laughs> and yeah, I know so there needs to be one winner, but it's sad. By the way, I do want to so backtrack sad. real yeah, yeah, sure. quick. Yeah. Um, for those of you listening, Kaylin Cutter, she did not get voted off the show. She will be oh, back no, next right. week. Yes, thank she, you. She unfortunately couldn't make it in tonight. And uh, – Starting the tradition that we started last week, uh, Glee Project is, again, in Studio B. So if there's uh, technical issues, things like that, let us know. Um, and please forgive them if you're listening. Yeah, because we're still getting used to Studio B here, trying to figure things out. Yeah, it's always a learning process, you know. And are we are we eventually going to have video coming from Studio B? Or? We will have. Uh, it's in the works. It's okay. kind of like Studio A for the first six and a half months was, yeah, uh, it was just all audio. It was, mm-hmm. and uh, there was no live streaming. However, with Studio B, uh, probably I would say give it a month. Give it a month. Awesome. We're, we're not going to do six and a half months before we go to video awesome. and live stream. Because we're streamlining everything around mm-hmm. here. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Tammy, by the way, um, it's kind of in the vein of Employee of the Month. We honor three hosts every month, and we have one former one, Woo! Michelle Macedo. Right, that's that's Michelle. that month. Yes, she she was uh she was after Blizzard of the Month for June for her great work there, um, and a special plug: download her music on iTunes by searching Michelle Macedo. She is so a great good. singer. M A C E D O Michelle Macedo. Oh, yes, exactly. You. And I feel like this is the perfect market for it. You guys, I'm sure, are fans of singing in general so there you go check that out and for the month of july even though it is august i don't know how that works out is her it? work tammy is an after buzzer of the month and the work she did to yeah. deserve that was Woo. in the month of july so i call him july after buzzer of the month Woo. even though it is august Woo. got it thank you yes i learned about that last week and it's been it's been a week of basking in my my oh, glory buzzer of the month glory mm. yes. awesome. and there's Nice pictures of oh, you thanks. too. Oh, thank you. Up in in the frame, thank she hers is in the in the on the right side. On the yeah, left, we have um, the left side. On the left side with yes. my red hat as one of them. And yeah. you and this dress. You know, I wasn't staring at it. <laughs> I would be weird. <laughs> that <laughs> so would be weird. creepy. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's move on. That's so, right. Um, so the first, the homework, pro- well, the theme of the whole show was believability, and uh, the homework project was uh, true colors. 
and Jenna Eschkowitz, who plays Tina on Glee, was the guest judge for that, as well as the. Um, we didn't really push coach. the Asian theme, though. You know, because because her character on Glee is all about you know like uh, the Asian couple. Very much so. Yes. And I always enjoy that. Yes. Well, it's one of those great things about Glee. They you know they do things that other shows don't do. And they really like get into them, and it's fun. But yeah, they didn't they didn't talk about that at all, not at all. And I thought it was sort of interesting how she she pulled off her mesh glove or whatever and said, "This is Tina. This is not me." So yeah. Clearly, she's very different from the character. Yes. She plays. Interesting. So the um, direction that they got from um, Robert Ulrich was be real. So they head right into their. Um, their version of that song of True Colors and they sang the whole song I think what they did was actually each contestant sang the whole song but what we saw was just a yeah. little bit of each one as they were singing um, what did you think what did you think about how people did um, I think it's it's really funny because they're all on camera all the time mm -hmm. but once they're told that they're on camera in that way and they have to look good then they all get really fake it was weird because Right after, if the camera's off, or then Hannah is obviously distracted and for a specific right. reason, you know? Right. And, and everyone's trying to, like, fight what they're really feeling. Right. And so, um, in terms of acting, I was not impressed. Oh, okay. By any means. Well, when we were, so when we were watching that, you know, them singing True Colors, I, you know, I try to not write notes while we're watching because I, because you can miss something yeah. in half a second on this show. And so my handwriting is always terrible on my notes, mm -hmm. but, um, the, and I have to shorthand everything. And I just wrote a big plus sign by Hannah because I thought she did a really good job on that piece. And that, um, and then I thought that Samuel was acting, you know. He just, mm -hmm. he's just, he, I can always see him acting. It drives me a little bit crazy. Yeah. I thought Damien's vocal quality was really great. And Phil, you actually commented on it. I don't know. I looked away or something and you went. I wrote Irish kid no good. Yeah. No Again, good. shorthanding. I, I thought his vocal quality was so beautiful. And right as I was writing that note, you went, oh, what was that? Oh, that went all wrong. And it was so funny because we had opposite reactions to that I moment. guess so. I'm um, trying to think of his part. I was focusing on the eyebrows. They, well, that's that's when they were doing the video. That's oh, later oh, in the thing. Yeah. Oh. This is the first yeah, like, little thought, homework assignment. I liked him. Well, you know what? I'm going to ask the same question as um, as Samuel did. What are we trying to make them believe? And for Irish boy, I was like, what are you trying to make me believe? That you're a good singer or just the bad one? Right. Well, and I thought that was a great question. What are, what are we trying to – how did he put that? Are we trying to make them believe what we're actually feeling or – are we supposed to actually feel something? I think is sort of mm. what you know what the question he was singing, saying. Um, and Lindsay, I thought she's just uh, actually somebody else said this. I wrote it down, and then somebody else said it too. Oh, oh we have a hold on. <laughs> Should we take this call? It's like a prank. One. Well, they're actually calling into Entourage. Oh, so uh, 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 shouldn't we not take it? Ah. Uh. See, up. the, uh, what do we call them, the... Uh, That's our little Skype sound, by the way, when, uh, to listeners out there to know what that, that is. Yeah, but what, sh what should we call it, like the goofs of Studio B, like the, mis not the mistakes, the, I don't want to call them mistakes, They're, but just the intricacies, the funness. The happenstances, the... <laughs> Alright, let's call them the happenstance of Studio Oopsie. B. Okay. <laughs> oh, man, I'm not used to these new mics. Mm, lots of happenstance happens mm -hmm. in here. Yes. Little so excitement. That was, that was fun, one of them. fun little things that happen in Studio B. Anyway, I thought Lindsay, she has one note. She sings the same. Not, I don't mean literally she sings on the same note. Yeah, her, no, Emotionally, she has one note. Yeah. And that's what I was seeing with her. And I think Samuel has the same thing. And obviously, we already know who got voted off. But, you know, we get to talk a little bit about, um, about this. But I thought it was, um, I thought Tina's, or what's her name, Jenna Eschkowitz's, um, feedback was was great she said that alex was captivating that damien was dreamy unlike what phil thought what he was maybe phil like wishes he was maybe damien. he probably does i'm mm -hmm. a better looking i can't do <laughs> you that don't even <laughs> try to do don't even try to do the item i mean he's a good like kid him. i like him you know uh that samuel was <laughs> intense but samuel's always intense but Lindsay was sweet she's always sweet and hannah was joyous i thought it was adorable that she said Hannah was joyous. Yeah. She was. I thought she was great. And yeah. Hannah obviously won. So anyway, moving on, we go to... But I like... Uh, yeah. What? I like um, how Lindsay called out Samuel. Yeah. 
and and said and talked about how he has he one, has one look one look he's looking right through people exactly yeah he does it's absolutely true but if, if Lindsay's gonna call out Samuel uh huh some A little pot call the kettle call black out. exactly uh-huh. Uh-huh. man Lindsay Lindsay is a whole lot of fake. She is. We had problem. We had issues with her in the uh, in this episode. So moving on to what the video was going to be, it's Paramore's uh, "The Only Exception," and it's about being in love with someone who doesn't know you exist. No choreography. All about acting. So dangerous. Uh huh. For these kids, for sure. Yeah, I didn't um, realize how how inexperienced they all are in acting. Well, and realize that a couple of these kids are really young. Um, one or two of them are 18 years old. Mm. So they've got, I, I, you know, at, I can still remember being 18 years old. And I, and I, I don't know if I've told either of you this, but I still it apologize. It was last year. Thank you. Yeah. I still apologize to my mom every time I see her for being 15 years old because I was wretched to yeah. my mother. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Awful. Every time I, I just saw her last week, and I said, "Mom, I'm so sorry. I was so nasty to you when I was 15." Ha, I has she you. forgiven oh, you? Oh yeah, she forgave me a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. Oh good. God bless her. <laughs> I was mean. My Not mom until was after stupid. you made 800 things of Julie for her, though, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah true. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which, by the way, Tammy is an amazing what, what you, jewelerist, what Ju- jewelry designer, jewelry mm-hmm. designer. Let's just slash go with that. everything else designer mm-hmm, slash. Mm-hmm. Oh, what my website? It's tamarascentral.com. Yeah. Tamara, so T A M A R A Central dot com. com. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Ooh, I love mm-hmm. that little video about the s'mores. I really want s'mores right now. Oh, there will be more video coming. We're actually editing some new video on Tuesday. Cool. So, yeah. All your people so, in Texas. Oh yeah. There's well, going to be some. specifically El Paso, Texas. But yeah, we'll uh, when when we get more info about that, we'll talk about that. But all, anybody out there in El Paso, just be be looking for some new information. Um, okay, so they go in to do vocals with Nikki. Right? Isn't that what happened? Yeah, they go yes. in to do vocals with Nikki, and uh, and the fir- one of the first people up was Alex, who, you know, uh, Pat Lambert, who was with us in the first few episodes of the Glee Project, was just a massive fan of Alex, and Alex has kind of not been the highest on my list. I think he has an incredible voice. I mean, he clearly has amazing range and and can really sing the heck out of pretty much any song but I feel like he's always putting on this flamboyant character and I find it irritating and grating and I, and actually it's the same criticism I have for a lot of these kids Lindsay's always the same thing Samuel is always the same thing Alex is always the same thing and sometimes that same thing is annoying mm-hmm. yeah and uh, it's not interesting Cameron's same thing I kind of liked but you know we'll talk about that we have some news about Cameron Fair um enough. But uh, but then Alex goes in there, and it seemed to me, did you get the feeling that they all got the coaching? Before you go in for your vocals, you really need to, like, punch yourself in the face a few times because yeah. you need to be sad. Yeah. I mean, it seems Punch yourself now. <laughs> and they would all do it, and you know they would. Well, whatever you it's, say, Robert. It just seemed like that's what they did. Absolutely. So Alex goes in, and Nikki says, you know, what are you thinking about? And, and he goes, when my father died, and... His father died when he was six. His father died a long time ago. Whoa. He's talking about how he had no male influence in his life. And what did you say, Phil? Oh, my God. I'm going to take so much heat for this. I said, no wonder he <laughs> is the way he is. Shocking. Well, and it's important for any for all people to have influences from both sexes in their lives because they, they get out of balance. They don't understand certain things. It's hard for them to relate to people. And uh, I, I think he could have used a little – in all seriousness, and I'm not trying to mm-hmm. – I'm, I'm absolutely not homophobic in any way, but that's kind of what Alex shows. He only shows his feminine side, and I think they're really good to validate what you're saying. I think there is room for important male influence in his life because, you know, he needs to – I'm an advocate for balance. I think balance yeah. is a very important yeah. thing. How um, very um, I of think you. Huh? How That's very how balanced, balanced of, of me. Yeah, I try. I try. Very um, – I think especially – that's not necessarily at least for me to say that two men or two women can't be parents oh no i i wholeheartedly believe they absolutely can be but you need to have you you need to have you know all elements present in some way and with the whole with the whole gay and the whole 
uh, all the pressure and stuff and in terms of like the stereotype yes and it's like well you have to be the stereotype but if you're not then like why don't you like girl you know like it's just so complicated yes it is uh, so i have a feeling eh, i don't know what uh the women in his family are like or whatever but i just wonder how he's been treated for being this way or how I mean, he's from Lynn, you know what's okay. interesting? He's from Lynn, Massachusetts. Yeah. And knowing Lynn, Massachusetts, uh-huh. I feel like he would st- see. Okay, Boston's very gay friendly. Oh, okay. Um, now Lynn is kind of more. I would say. I mean, I guess they're liberal and all that, but I would say I would edge on the side of uh, caution and say they're more conservative. Okay. And he sticks out like a sore thumb. So the fact that yeah, he's. I w- I'll give him a lot of credit. He's probably been very courageous throughout his whole life. Well, and he he's is. only been out for like less than a year. It's it's only been a few oh. months that he's been out. He came out to his mom. He talked about this in the early episodes. Came out to his mom very recently, and is only. I mean, so I don't know if his if part of the reason why he's so flamboyantly gay could be that he's just sort of stretching that that persona yeah. for himself and kind of living that because he's been hiding that for a long time. I don't know. But um, it was really interesting to see him talk about his, um, you know, his his issue with his father dying. He cr- he was start crying so hard that they had to stop the recording session and Nikki came in and had to talk to him. I know. And, you know, one the thing is, is that here, here's one of my opinions. Acting singing as well is is they are arts where you have to connect with your um emotions Mm -hmm. and your feelings in order to be genuine I believe that yeah um however I really don't subscribe to the thinking that you have to um, live your pain in order to become a good artist. I don't believe that you have to starve. I don't believe that you have to become practically suicidal to be successful. Mm. Perhaps that's a pretty balanced point of view. <laughs> but And maybe that's true for some people, but it's not true for me. Well, um, part of the whole thing is that it just doesn't make for good copy. You know what I mean? Oh, so here's a rich, you know, let's say let's take this scenario. Yeah. We have a rich kid from whatever town you want right. to say right. um, who's been – who's gotten everything in life. Right. In fact, let's even make him the star jock. And all of a sudden he decides he wants to get into whatever, singing. Right. And he, now all of a sudden well, uh, he's the next Justin Timberlake. Right. You know what I mean? Well, and so it just doesn't sound good. Right. Well, uh, that's true. To counter, to counter that, well, I mean, I get what – I totally get what you're saying and what you're saying, Phil. I think that probably – probably I think – from all the people that I met, it's not so much about their situation, more as as it's about their them as a person. Because people can experience things and yeah. take them totally differently. You know, True. some people can become uh, harsh and callous, where another person and shut would down. just yeah, mm-hmm. a, a be just super empathetic and and that would make them more sensitive to people around them. Mm-hmm. I think that um, I agree with you. I don't think that you have to be super you know suicidal and whatnot to be successful and all that stuff yeah and and the the point that i was getting to was going through this process of believability the whatever pep talk they got before they went into vocals because i think they did that said you know you need to connect with your emotions i don't think that preparing for a scene or preparing for a song has to be therapy you know, and so when when people bring that stuff in, it it can sometimes really irk me, especially if it's coming from um, expectations and and perhaps not truth. Now, that being said, I believe that what Alex went through was absolutely true because for the first time we saw him doing something different. We saw him doing something that I really you know bought. Mm. But um, but the note I said I put there was this isn't therapy. Yeah, it's singing, and I know you have to connect with your emotions, but do we all have to go through it with you? Know, and know. the thing is, um, maybe a little harsh. But well, I mean, <laughs> totally your opinion. So the thing about, um, I was in the acting studio at Emerson, and it was basically mm-hmm. the same mm-hmm. fourteen people mm-hmm. all the time, every day, yes. and we got to know each other really well. Obviously, and, yeah. And it was always the question, and and there was arguments back and forth about it of what's the difference between 
acting class and therapy. Mm -hmm. And basically what I think was like agreed upon is that therapy is more of a self-indulgent thing. Whereas if someone, you know, on stage is like crying and, and super upset, we're not going to be as connected to that person as we are with the person that's trying to fight back tears because it's Mm -hmm. more true and realistic. Mm -hmm. And, and I think, you know, therapy is when people need to work their stuff out there. Whereas if someone comes up and singing or something, then, you know, use it and it can be beneficial. Exactly. Um, Obviously Nikki felt like she had to go in there, which I don't know if she does that. Or she's, I've never seen her do it. She doesn't seem like she's very, you know, uh, warm necessarily. Right? Yeah, she doesn't coddle them at all. Yeah, yeah. She's used to working with professionals, and these are these are kids who are not yet professionals, and again, very young. I think Alex is 19 years old, 18 or 19 years old. Mm. Yeah. Um, it just seemed to come up, and I mean, I guess it never comes up for him, so... It yeah. just had to come, but all it took was him saying that sentence, and yeah. then he was gone. And he was gone. And his performance, the word I wrote, was beautiful, and it was simple, and there was less show this time. And I was ju- I was very impressed with him on that. Mm. Um, n- and next, who we see, and be- oh, and before he sang, what I wrote was Alex is going home. And then he sang, and I was like, eh, cross mm-hmm. that out. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> that was my prediction early on in the show, and obviously mm-hmm. that's not right. Mm-hmm. So next we have Lindsay, Ugh. who got up there. You're so funny because uh, Caitlin really can't stand Lindsay. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and we've really had we've really been annoyed with her from the very beginning of the show because you were picking up on it a little bit she's incredibly narcissistic she always talks about how awesome she is and she is awesome she's really talented she's very pretty she's she conveys herself well but she's as uh my boyfriend zach brought Mm -hmm. up later in the show she's overcompensating all the time she's because she doesn't believe it herself so she gets in there, and they, and she sa- and Nikki says, what are you thinking about? She goes, I'm thinking about home. And Nikki goes, well, the things that you left behind. And 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 it just – and she was like – I know. <laughs> and no tears were coming out. That's always my clue. Yeah, exactly. No tears. If no tears are coming out, you're not really feeling it. Yeah, totally. Totally. Because she wasn't fighting back anything. She – I just saw her when Alex came out. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh man, that was really rough. I think that set a uh-huh. standard, uh-huh. and especially Lindsay on her face yep. was like, oh man, I gotta do, I gotta do something like that. Yep. Now he made like an impression, and he went through this whole experience. Yep. So like, I, now, now it's my turn, whatever. And it's so funny that Nikki just totally caught onto it mm-hmm. right away, mm-hmm. and I'm so glad because sometimes. You know, sometimes you see someone and you see a character and it's so obvious to you yep. and then not to the people. But yeah, I'm really glad they have the harsh, you know, casting people that they have. I, I, me too. And it was so nice to hear her say, you know, I feel like she's on more than one occasion that she is not being 100% real. And we were like, yeah, yes. finally you're seeing it. And what was that thing in the end where uh, Lindsay takes the headphones off, puts them on the, um, on the stand and goes, you're awesome. And walks out. <laughs> I, I so have to back funny. it out because I missed. I didn't actually see it. So, what do you think that was about? Uh, I maybe I I was maybe the the closing to her like faking it. I mean, I think that there probably wasn't any reason for her to say that. And I think if anything, after. I don't know how long they were in there yeah, recording and stuff. Knows, yeah. I'm sure she was driving Nikki crazy. Yeah. Nikki was like, They ah. were probably driving each other crazy. Yeah, exactly. And and Lindsay was probably faking it, I think, obviously. But I'm guessing maybe she really meant it to come across as, like, genuine, I but, think. Yeah, and it just it fell so flat. Nikki no. was like, she did not mean that. Um, yeah. And it looked like... You know, we say in my family, sometimes thank you means F you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> when you're being really sarcastic and you go, no, really, thank you. <laughs> um, and I, I think you're awesome, Matt. I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> that, totally. I mean, that's what it sounded like. Yeah. Like she was at the end of her rope. She was sick of it. She went, you know what? You're awesome. And then left. Yeah. Oh, um, I was going to ask, have the judges called her out before? Never. About- Never. Really? Oh, Mm-mm. man. Mm-mm. I don't think so. She's been believable. Yeah. 
Really? Yeah, until until Believability Week. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, so pretty much everybody else was just sort of, you know, great in their in their vocals, right? Um, Samuel, she was very impressed with Samuel, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah, she was. The one part she they showed, he was pushing or something. I don't and, know. Yeah, and then she had him redo it. Yeah, I think he gets caught up in his sound. Yeah. You know, and... And, and his image as well. Yeah. His, his rock and roll, I'm, I'm you know, intense and I can... I you know. know. Burn you with my eyes. Exactly. And I'm so thing. intense and yeah. it's, it's, it's such a, such a projection of what he wants people to see. Yeah, and he, he gets stuck in the rut. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, what kind of a note is, that was totally right, however... Now do it again, but this time with confidence. Yeah. Because okay, then you didn't all the totally notes totally right. 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 Yeah. Um, well, unless, probably technically maybe it was right, all the notes and stuff. But right. It wasn't yeah. right. Is that what that confidence. means? It could I'm also guessing. mean it, that was absolutely right, but I'd like to see if you can do it a different way that I might like even more. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes notes – like that lame. happen Sometimes and they're, they're like that makes no sense but okay i'll do that right i'll try you just gotta get them you know what that means actually here's what it means i really feel like you don't believe what you're doing and i need to pump you up a little bit <laughs> yes. so that was totally awesome that was exactly right mm-hmm. now try to do it in a way that makes me really believe what you're doing <laughs> that's exactly what <laughs> right? it was that's exactly right? what it is for sure um, okay, so then we go on to the video, and Hannah with her straight hair. I just think her hair looks so, – it, it obviously takes time because she doesn't do it herself. But she – it looks like video, she really, so like, pretty. took care of herself. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, like, put work into preparing and She stuff. went into hair and makeup. She didn't do anything. I know, yeah. Her. But she looks really pretty. She always does. I like that. Yes. Um, and she – first thing she's talking about – I love her – I'm going to really miss, because we know Hannah got – booted off i'm gonna really miss her confessionals because she says the greatest things in Mm. them and you you don't know because you haven't seen them but she's charming and she's funny and she's she says the things that you're she answers the questions that you're wondering about Mm. and she's she's the most real in the um and she talks a lot they show her a lot on the confessionals and i'm really gonna miss those um but she said yeah i was really distracted because I'm hot for Damien, and <laughs> I have to be hot for Alex, and I don't. And they're sitting right next to each other, and I don't know what to do. <laughs> um, but the whole video shot in close-ups, which, as you know, is incredibly difficult because the tendency when we're acting is to act exactly, and do things big, and when you're doing a close-up, you look ridiculous. Yes. Case in point, Damien and the dancing eyebrows. Yes, and especially because he was, and then he was like. Oh man, I don't want my eyebrows to dance. So then he was paying attention to the fact that he shouldn't pay attention to it. Exactly, and self-conscious about him. Yeah. By the way, at least you don't have to wear pants now. It's great. You can just in, cl- in close-ups. With close-ups. Yeah, you That's just true. you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, You're absolutely right. Well, you know what? They could have all been pantsless, and we wouldn't have known. We yeah, would that's never. That's a good day for me. That is. No. <laughs> hey, when is it not a good day when it's pantsless day? So true. We're pantsless in the studio right now. Yeah, you don't I have am. to see us. Tr- me t- yeah, you are. I know. I like it. Tamara it's summer. is it's hot. pantless. It is and hot. And I'm pantsless. And uh, according to Friends with Benefits, it's taught me, you know what? You don't have to be ashamed if you just want to walk around in your underwear. It's a fun time. Mm-hmm. Have you seen Friends with Benefits? I have not. The new You'll, Justin Timberlake and Mila Kunis movie. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah it's too, not too bad. All right. Go yeah. see it. A little plug there. So okay. now Phil is practicing what he Pantsless preaches. Tuesday. So. Mm-hmm. I'm pantsless every day. Pantsless every day. <laughs> okay. Um, so Zach, who I'm for here, from here on out calling my boyfriend, because I, I had a dream about him while I was on vacation. No. That I was actually auditioning, not about him really, he was just in the dream, but that I was auditioning with the Glee kids, and um, <laughs> and uh, it was really weird, because I'm way older than all the Glee kids, and um, and Zach, who is an age-appropriate man for me, actually. Um, well, he- so is everyone else, they're 18. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying, you are, you, are, you uh, talk like you're so much older, and like you're ancient. I'm not ancient, I'm just, I'm not a teenager, certainly, but, um, but Zach was in this dream, and he was um, hitting on me, and it was really hard for me to try and focus on what I was trying to do for these auditions, because Zach would be like, making eyes at me, and stuff uh. like that, and so... <laughs> It's the, you know how dreams don't really stick with you very long, yeah. sometimes not even into the day. This dream has stuck with me for three weeks, so <laughs> clearly it made an impression. <laughs> so Zach is my boyfriend. Um, and Zach said awesome. about 
uh, Alex, I can't believe Alex gave me the chills during his yeah. shooting of the video. I know. And I, I turned to you, kind of probably elbowed you because I was so <laughs> excited to have actually watch the show with somebody because a lot of times I'm so busy. Sometimes we mm. don't even see it at the same time, all of us. Um, I couldn't believe he did either. I think he did a brilliant job. He was so good. I know. And I, I was afraid because they said, cause, and he even said, which is a common acting thing. It's like, oh, I felt something, so I'm going to milk it. Right. I'm going to really push it. Exactly. Which then it's not organic Kiss of anymore. Death. Yeah, exactly. And so they were saying uh, he looks depressed. And not like he's pining for someone mm-hmm. or liking the person across mm-hmm. the table. Like he's going to cry. And so I thought for sure they would have to give him that note. But uh, he like killed Pulled it. it out. First, yeah. yeah. Out of nowhere. So good. Yeah. So uh, interesting. Damien worried about the eyebrow dance. And they actually cut his eyebrows in the <laughs> shot. <laughs> so you actually couldn't even see the eyebrows I know, in the music so video. Funny. I thought that was hysterical. Because that's the first place I looked when I went to his face. I was and like, are his eyebrows jumping? Yeah, no, we can't see them because they cut them out. This is an HD, right? Maybe. Right. Yeah, I think it is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No more HD eyebrows. HD eyebrows. <laughs> uh, Lindsay needed twinkle. She's the same as we, she always is. Samuel, staring through people. Whatever. He did the same thing he always does. So our bottom three yeah. were Lindsay, Hannah, and Samuel. And that was something to be. You guys kept thinking that it was going to be bottom two and uh, I, I thought top it was. three. But I thought it was. I swear I wrote down last week that we were only going to have two in the bottom this next week. But I clearly got that wrong because we had three in the bottom. Um, and interesting, when they were getting their feedback from Robert Ulrich. Am I saying his last name Ulrich? right? Ulrich. Yeah. Uh, Ehrlich. That's it. It's Ehrlich. Or Ehrlich. Ehrlich. It's probably Ehrlich. Ehrlich. Um, basically, he was going... You were sucky, and you were sucky, and you were sucky, and you were kind of sucky. And then he he basically said, Alex, you were awesome. Yeah, totally. <laughs> that was awesome because finally, which is why he's not going home. Right. I mean, this was an awesome and, week. And then Damien, the Irish, as we call him, uh, <laughs> he did not get put in the bottom three. And he's been in the bottom three for four weeks in a row. And fell to his knees and was so surprised. Fell to and he his said, knees. and he said, I've been to hell and back and I've been, been to hell and back and be prepared to fight. <laughs> and yeah, because he's Irish, I like believe that he's actually been to hell and back for some reason. <laughs> Everything they he have a hard says, life in Ireland. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I, I so they do. believe they only that. Eat potatoes and all that. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. And they have leprechauns. Bring on some more stereotypes. Some they have pots of gold though. Yeah, yeah well, totally. They, kept getting, they keep getting stolen. Or it's bombed. Yeah. I right. know. Okay. That's the thing. Wait, Northern Ireland is. That's because the they're Catholics. And Protestants. Ugh. Well, um, we shouldn't <laughs> even go on that. Though. That's the problem right there. <laughs> uh, so Hannah goes up to do her her song, and her her vocal quality not good. Why don't you comment comment on? Yeah, that? the whole time, I because I liked her from the beginning, and mm-hmm. so I really wanted to like her, mm-hmm. and I really wanted her to be a really good singer. And the whole time, she was not um, on top of her voice; like yep. she was flat the she whole was time, just slightly flat. And listening to it i was like come on just get it just get back on the note because once you start off like usually oh yeah. it's not good and and i'm not sure if she heard it but then she took a break to breathe and there was like a, an instrumental part a, a really small instrumental part and then she finally like got back into it and i was uh-huh. like well, let's start the song over now because she right. finally got she finally back hit at the her end. Groove. Mm-hmm. but i didn't i thought that she would be a great singer because I thought, you know, everyone on the show must be, like, an amazing singer. Mm-hmm. Um, but, no, with her, it's, like, the charisma, not about the singing yeah, at all. Yeah, exactly. And that's the, – the Ryan Murphy talks about it later. He said, you know, clearly at this point it's about who's the most talented. And he told her right up front, you are not as good a singer as the other two you're up against, and it's mm. going to be hard for you. One of the um, things – you, you, you probably know about this. I learned about this when I was in a choral group a long time ago, that when you're singing flat, if somebody can, if like if you're being directed by somebody, one of the tricks is smile, and it automatically yeah. raises you up. Now this song can't, probably can't really smile in the song because it was a little bit of a melancholy. Sometimes you can slip it in there like you're smiling because you're feeling it so yeah. much. Because it, it raises it the adds, soft palate, exactly, which brings it, just, it all up. Yeah. So I a great little trick. I totally feel that. <laughs> you know what Still I mean? doing it right now. I could just picture my my choral director going like this. Oh you my know, god! Well, totally smile because she could hear it. Never to me because I was you always the perfect, one who yeah. it was almost. Well, I'm gonna smile every day forth, and I'm gonna sing. No, okay. all right, yeah, I will never sing again. Okay, thank you, Phil. We would appreciate that. <laughs> um, 
But the, what did you think about the conversation they had afterwards, Ryan Murphy, after she sang? She, they said, you know, you're the show. I love you. I want to root for you. But you aren't. You don't see what we see, and you're not loving what we love about you. Mm. And she, they were like, work on confidence. Yeah. And that's clear. And and also that's that's clear for her, but that's also clear with everyone. Like, everyone has a big thing with confidence. I mean, it's everybody's thing. Yes. But you could really tell with her, especially singing that song. Yeah. And, well, I, I think that's, again, one of the things I love about her is she she doesn't hide stuff. Yeah. You know? She's out front with how she feels. She's out front with, you know, what her conflicts are, where her insecurities are. Last week she was having trouble doing floor work because she couldn't get up off the floor in a, in a you know, graceful way and so she was so frustrated with that and she just talks about it she doesn't she doesn't like sweep it under the rug and go no 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 don't talk. she gets out there and talks about it yeah so it's one of the things that I really think is wonderful about her um and it's sad that she has that issue of not being able to believe in herself I know and she knew it too she's like yeah I'm working on it you know which is usually People wouldn't say that, and especially not Lindsay. Right, not be vulnerable about yeah, it, and yeah. she was. One of the, um, just a little side note, one of the tricks, I, I, I remember, uh, I have two sisters, I have an older and a younger sister, and um, had, you know, kind of a difficult time when growing up in my relationship with my older sister, because we were so close in age that we were having, you know, mm. kind of the sibling rivalry competitive mm. thing going on, and... Um, and then once we became adults, we're very, very close. The three of us are so close. And you, you see me Good. with my younger sister, haven't you? Um, I, I'm not maybe sure. Maybe not, maybe not. But I've seen you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you know, we're definitely sisters. There's no question there. Um, but I was, I was kind of having, you know, there were things going on in my life. And, and, you know, life was sort of hard. And I overheard my older sister describing me to one of her friends. In, hi- in high school? Uh, no, this is uh, five five, eight years ago, not, not very long ago, so, but still not high school because it's been longer ago than mm. high school. Mm-hmm. Um, but she was describing me to one of her friends, and, her, and she goes, oh, my sister Tam, she's so amazing. She does this and she does that, and she listed off all the things that I did. And I was listening to her, and I was like, oh, my God, I'm awesome. <laughs> you know. And I, and I didn't believe that about myself. Totally. But then when I heard her saying it, I was like, isn't that interesting that she sees – at the time, I was making jewelry – on my dining room table, okay? And so every night when I wanted to go, uh, you know, go to bed or whatever, I'd have to put everything away. And mm. I I felt like I was kind of a little bit of a failure because I was, in my mind, the girl who makes earrings in her pajamas at the dining room table. Whereas my sister would describe it as, my sister Tamara, she has the most amazing line of jewelry. She works with somebody, blah, 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 blah. And she'd describe it to people and go, and she's so incredible, and she's like this. And I was like, now isn't it interesting that she sees me that way, and I see me as the loser who makes you know, jewelry in her pajamas. And so from that, any time from that point on that I would feel down about myself, I would go, how would my sister Indy describe me doing this right now? That's a good one. And it's, uh, I still use that to this day. Probably once a week, I will go, how would, and and it doesn't even matter what she would say. I just know how she holds me, you know, how she uh, appreciates what I do. And it's, it's so lovely because it's much more helpful to see yourself, like they were saying, in this wonderful way as, as your talent and as your beauty than to see yourself as, you know, negative and bad. And the girl yeah, makes, you being know, like, you're not good enough, you're earrings. not good enough. That's funny because when you say that about the making jewelry on your dining room table, I, just, I think in my head, like, you know, an artist who's, like, so passionate and, like, stays up late at night to do it. Right. And, you know, like a painter or something. Right. And I would never think, like, failure. Right. Right. You know, and but sometimes hearing it out loud or just saying it out loud, you're like, whoa, that's that's crazy. Yeah. You know, that. Yeah. Because everybody be has so their harsh. stuff. Everybody has their stuff. Yeah, definitely. And so that was that is one of the things I would love to. That's a story I would love to tell Hannah mm. is, you know, whenever you start having that negativity come into you and you and it could go for any one of these kids. Think about how Ryan Murphy would describe you to other people, how Robert Ehrlich would describe you to people how's that you know they would talk about your tenacity and mm. and your you know talent and your beauty and your vulnerability and your joyfulness how would tina who who saw you in the first thing she would call you joyful why not see yourself as that mm. 
Mm. It's much more beneficial. Yeah, definitely. Um, so then we move on to Lindsay, who was outstanding. Would you agree? Yeah. In she her song. was really great. And if she hadn't heard of the song, so I was like, what, who are how, how you? How can you be a musical theater gal and I know. never have heard of that song? And she she seems like so, like she would know everything. Yeah. She would make sure to never, yep. never have that cabaret. But she was awesome. She was fantastic. I was like, damn, she is talented. Even though I hate thinking that she annoys people, me yeah <laughs> it's like she knows she's talented and so she's full of herself and i hate that but she is talented i don't want to like it but wasn't it cool how ryan murphy was able to get it out of her yeah like he he said you know tell me what that's about and she says well i've been taught to be strong and i can't be vulnerable and he's like uh you know tell me more and and he your boyfriend was like overcompensation my, yeah my boyfriend had some nice insight there. yes he did love you zach Miss you. <laughs> um, uh, I, I thought that was really great, and she she showed herself. Phil, did you see that part of the show where she was singing her song? Because I know you have. We were having to go out and do. Something. No, I didn't see you that. Missed, okay, yeah. you would have loved it, and you might want to go back and watch just her do that song because it. Because I know you're a fan of Lindsay, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Overall, okay. As far as she, these it was kids fantastic. Go. You should go back and watch it because it was. It really was excellent. Um, and so then moving on to Samuel, I thought his vocals were great but I totally agreed with Ryan Murphy his assessment that he uh, he he said he was he's unrelatable and rarefied yeah and too slick and I want to see you be emotional and vulnerable and then they talk about and then he nailed him about the gay issue yeah so oh mm -hmm. man a oh. couple episodes ago uh he had talked about, Samuel had talked about how he didn't like to play gay because his mom wouldn't approve of him being a gay character. And everybody was kind of like, what? You can't oh, be saying that stuff no. and want to get on Glee because... Glee is a super gay-friendly show, yeah. first of all. And I, I think that most of the people on that set would share that attitude. Absolutely they would. So that's interesting. Now, did he, did he Just say... Just don't bring your mom to work day. Right, Just exactly. <laughs> don't bring your mom. I'm bringing your mom to work day. And he did clean it up a little bit. He said, you know, my mom would support me. I love Jesus. Yeah, I've he got probably Jesus got in trouble for that. Neck, and so I wonder, is it really about his mom or is it him well, being I think that's what Ryan Murphy was getting at. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you're a homophobe, you can't be ugly. Yeah, I know. I was like, how's he going to dig his way out of this one? Mm-hmm. And how did he? How do we? How did he react? He was like, "I love Jesus. I love Jesus," and then he was like, "But I don't think that like listening to rock music is wrong." I'm just like, "Just say you don't think being gay is wrong." <laughs> I know, really, say it, please. But I don't for I, our sanity. He seems like he isn't cool with that. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure. Which is really interesting. Troubling, actually. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I want. I, if that's the case, I want him to go home because mm -hmm. that's a, it's a hateful type of person. So then, again, Ryan Murphy gets down to it and he says, "Who's the most talented?" That's really the bottom line of it. And if that's what he's looking at, then Lindsay can't go home and Samuel can't go home. I as know. much as we love Hannah, she is the one because she doesn't sing as well. Yeah, and it's and but it's really obvious, you know. Yeah. It's not even like she's she's not like even close. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Which and is so harsh. Taylor what Swift. The, well, what's that? Go ahead. Oh, I was just saying that Taylor Swift isn't like the you know is no like Beyonce and her songs are pretty simple in mm -hmm. terms of singing. It's not like vocally super challenging. Yeah. So whereas the cabaret song is, mm -hmm. and and still you know she just she didn't do as well she just didn't do as yeah, well because she, she doesn't have it. it she doesn't yeah. have the chops and she has so many other things that are fantastic about her yeah but i mean if that's what you're comparing on is vocal talent yeah she had to be cut and it made me really sad i yelled i was very sad yeah it was, it's just killing me from this point on everybody who gets cut is just i know me. yes yeah, it, is, it is very sad and but Go ahead. I was going to say, would it be uh, cruel to uh, take Samuel's character and have him win and then just write him to have all the, quote, gay scenes? Uh, That's would what I wanted so bad. Make I him like, gay for pay. Yeah. Yes. Um, How badly do you want to be on Glee? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, you know, 
cruel or not cruel, it would, be, it, you know, obviously it would be a challenge. It would be just like making camera and make out with every – have a, like a orgy scenes By the week, way, after it, week after week after week. And you can v- make it very meta where you have a straight character within the show of Glee yes. who has to act gay for whatever reason right? but mm. doesn't want to. Like he's a double agent. Exactly, and then you just yeah, you could have some fun with that. Yeah, yeah. I should have gotten hired. Ian Ian Brennan, you were in studio as a writer. You, yeah, Ian Ian Brennan came down for Glee. Mm-hmm. He's a he's a co creator. Mm-hmm. And you know what, Ian, if you're listening, take me on. We made some. Uh, we had a good friendship going that day. <laughs> I have some ideas. I like okay. the show. Yeah, I was okay. surprised at uh, the response, which was, um, oh, we're looking for. Christians or people right because they want to excuse me they tried to do like a Christian theme with Diana Agron's character um, and and because she was the president of the celibacy club then got pregnant and the the thing is is that it the storyline we talked about this a little bit last week when Cameron left that they they tried to make it about the about her morality and about her religion, mm-hmm. but it ended up it just it, the, the storyline did not go that way. And Ryan Murphy talked about how they tried to do a Christian character and they weren't successful with it. So you know they're they're wanting to do it again, um, and they keep going back to that. I mean, they had a whole episode dedicated to you know religion. Yep. Um, no one was specifically oh, yeah. Christian or whatever, but. Um, you know, everyone kind of soul searched that episode. You know, it was called uh, like a, a grilled prayer. Jesus. A grill, because right? I mean, it was praying to grilled because, Jesus. Because uh, Finn found <laughs> the uh, the grilled Image Jesus. Of grilled Jesus in his uh, grilled cheese sandwich. That's right. <laughs> cool. It was so. very funny. But yeah, they want to get back to it because it's an it's an important thing for people to talk about. You know, it's a it's the religion is an issue that's very. Uh, prevalent in the media people are very passionate about it and so it's something that needs to be talked about but uh but for hannah as she said the dream is over and that's one of the things that makes me so sad is that certain people who are voted off will still have a career just like you know idol or any of these other competition shows and i'm not so sure about her because she's a really specific type she's not you know typically telegenic um i mean her show would the one show on TV that would be her thing is Glee. Is Glee, yeah. And uh, I, 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 I think she could. There is a place for her, but I don't know where it is, and it's not quite as easy for her as it is for somebody like uh, oh, I can't remember her name, McKinley. Well, what was, was that? What was that ago? movie Hairspray? Right? Was, yeah. Wasn't the uh-huh. main lead? Yes. Yeah. Kind of Hannah esque. Yes. Large. A bigger gal. Sure. Yes. yes. Yeah, but the thing is. We besides get more one role, besides though. exactly we besides get more hairspray, you know that it's it's a huge. Th- I mean, there's a lot more work for you know more telegenic, people, yes. more right. People love singing and dancing. That's why the voice works. That's why uh, yep. American Idol works. Yep. That's why Glee is so popular. Yep. Yeah, so we just need more shows like that. And okay. Let's get a hand on that one. Okay, I have good. a feeling it's all coming. <laughs> I think that's a good, a good, uh, a good thought. And let's, yeah, let's make that happen. So uh, I think we should go now to perhaps a commercial break. Oh, and we then can we certainly will, do that. We can talk about some news and gossip after that. Excellent. Want to find out what the after buzz is about? Janice is a drama queen. This yes. is the divide that is going to carry the series. Give us a call. 424-256-1729. 424-256-1729. This television and they want it to be as dramatic as possible. And we need to check experience. You never know what goes on behind closed doors. Find out why After Buzz TV is the number one source for after show content. Now, in the eyes of Jimmy, Nucky is a villain. 424-256-1729. 424-256-1729. Now, let's go to the I mean, who would you guys rather hear that from? Your husband or your best friend? <laughs> the wig! The wig! Oh, the wig. That wig. When the TV show is over, get your after buzz on. This is Kim Kardashian Jam. Turn it up, baby. I okay. I exposed Phil to this song. It's so good. You should have seen the the episode where she recorded it. It's oh really fun. She's literally like, I'm on the floor, and the guy is like, just please, just say it. I mean, you don't even have to sing. Just say it with just like a little more energy. 
say it, but, and they did like 500 takes, and then they were like, "We'll we'll work with that. We'll work with that." Oh my god! And she just s- said it. It was really bad. Oh, it was really bad. Heavens. She was like, "I'm really nervous. I've never sung before." Yeah, there's some. Th- there's a reason why there are professionals who do that work. Exactly, mm-hmm. man. Mm-hmm. So yes, I have a little uh, news and gossip. Project news and gossip. You don't know you do. After Buzz TV News. So Cutie Cameron appeared at the Television Critics Association press tour uh, last week with the remaining five cast members and said, I don't regret my decision to leave at all. In the moment, to some people, it might seem like a hasty decision, but it was it was something that I truly felt in my heart. He also spoke on his hesitancy about kissing a girl in the prior episode. He said, I never acted before. You know, I was a bit naive about that. So... You, you're, you're not really familiar with Cameron, but he was uh, in the bottom three last week. He uh, did his song. It was uh, Cameron, Damien, and Alex who yes. did theirs. And uh, Damien, the, the Irish kid, did not do so well. Mm. And as they were talking, Cameron was talking about his challenge because the, the theme for that week was sexuality. He's a real stad- steadfast Christian, had trouble with kissing girls and portraying things, and basically he quit <sighs> in front of Ryan Murphy. Ryan Murphy was going, you know, what are you trying to say? Are you, are you quitting? And ultimately by the end of the show he did quit and he would not have been cut they would have cut damien and in but fact he they, pulled himself out. the big what? the big thing i believe is ryan went after him and said hey yes don't leave yeah i'm not yeah. ready to quit on you i'm not ready to give up on you i think is what he said yeah mm-hmm. oh my god and so he went and w- and we were all just screaming about what a giant mistake that was yeah and all the hard work because like mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. it and, uh, yeah, and so he said a week later, or actually however many months later, but a week after the show came out, that I don't regret my decision. Well, I, I really hope you stick to that story for the rest of your life. I, I know, really. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I mean, uh, Ryan Murphy, he was nice and very tough on him. He said, yes. you know, like, hey, listen, I respect that you have these views and I can write these views. But there will come a point where, you know what, I'm going to have to test those views on the show. Right. Can you do that for me? Right. And I'm willing to be sensitive and work with you on those. Within your parameters. Which is amazing. Totally. Who gets that opportunity, you know, like as an actor? And you don't get no. asked that. By the, by the, what, I mean, Ryan Murphy, he's one of the top showrunners. I mean, Nick Tuck, yep. Glee, and now he's got, you know, he's got, I believe, two other shows coming out. Like, in TV world. Ryan Murphy is God. I don't understand why Cameron wanted to like be on a show, you know? Yeah, why did you get into it in the first place? That's what you were talking about basically last week. Oh yeah, you I know, talked why? about <laughs> more than that, but yeah. Yeah. Why yeah, why would you even take the place of people who were absolutely committed to it? So anyway, the whole point is just that he he stuck to his story, like you say, Phil, and and he said he's still Well, you know happy what? It, although it wow. is months from um, since the Taping. show was mm-hmm. taped um, it comes. It comes a week, or now it's been a week since the show aired. I'm still curious to see months from when the show aired, not when they stopped taping. You know uh, right, I mean? exactly. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's a fine rebuttal. Um, oh, after the show aired, yeah. Well, I stuck to my guns. Yeah. Well, let's see that in a few. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see that in a year. I agree. I agree. So, also, producers have hinted that the winner of this competition may actually get more airtime than the originally promised seven-episode arc. Producers are also being coy about the other the other aspects of the Glee Project competition. Casting director Robert Ehrlich says anything can happen in the world of Glee, which I hope means that some of these kids who have been voted off are going to show up on the show. We talked oh. about this earlier uh, in the series, and I think they'd be fools not to use some of these kids. Yeah, totally. I think they will. I absolutely think they will. Especially, I mean, what surprises me more and more is how Glee, obviously a very successful show, you would think, like, um, you know, everything was smooth as butter for them. But it is pretty much a daily grind for them. And uh, they come up, you know, they're as ghetto as it gets. Yep. And yet the product they turn out is obviously very fantastic. Yeah. And I, I, I have a tremendous respect for that. I do too. I, I and I think that um, they've clearly got a lot going on for them that is really good. I I wasn't that excited about seeing the Glee Project in the first place because I, I have 
I, my TV hours are full <laughs> in yes. my life, and I wasn't looking forward to having another show I had to watch. But I've loved it, and I've loved seeing the process that they go through to find these characters, to watching what Ryan Murphy's thinking about, yeah. you know, seeing them make these choices has been really interesting. It's a little bit behind the scenes, and I think it's been really great. Yeah. So um, that's it for our news and gossip for this week. All right. Well, then, uh, on to prediction. So and now, you're after, after Buzz, Buzz TV predictions. We have I'm four left. Really cool how you said it at the same time. Yeah, I was kind of <laughs> off cue. Yeah, you were awesome. Do, who? Okay, who wants to start? We've got four, four uh, contestants left. Who do we is think there is better gonna... be a bottom three? By the way, that's going to be brutal. But I want a bottom three. Well, who do you, who do we? So, well, next are we saying? Yeah, Go ahead. next week's um, uh, challenge is generosity and lean on me is the the song that they're doing for their uh, first piece. So, mm. so are we Samuel, saying Alex, who Lindsay is going to win or who's going to get cut off for next? week? Who's going to get cut off next week? Uh, I believe Damien's the only safe one. I feel like at, just in the ter- if if. I had to define generosity within these kids. Oh, yeah. Damon has the most uh, generosity. Generous, he's the most generous natured. Yes. I, I agree gonna with that. I was going to say, like, that's going to be telling of them as people, you know, generosity. Yeah. Which is, like, so important for acting, Sorry. you know? I don't know. Um, and, yeah, I think that's going to be a revealing one. And I wonder if perhaps some of behind the scenes you know scenarios and interpersonal communication is going to come into play in this yes. there might be a little shenanigans some uh, manipulation for lack of a better word totally challenges that these kids are going to come up against to see how how generous can they be and that will be huge for these kids definitely decide. um i think let me think here i think samuel is going to be the next one kicked off that's what i think too Wait, Samuel, the one with the dreads. dreads. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. All right, so we are predicting Samuel. For Sorry, Samuel. Week. You hate yeah. gay people. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Anything else? Uh, as I'm, we, we always have the show playing on in the background, and I just saw um, an ad for Tia and Tamara. Um, yeah, the I new know. Show on I Style saw. Yeah. And I just wanted to give a quick plug um, to, to our girl Jenna. Let <laughs> me look up her last name. Jenna Singer. That's it. Jenna Singer. Jenna Singer. I didn't have to look it up. One of the other after buzzers of the month, right? Isn't no, no, she, no. She, she, uh, Jenna Singer was um, the producer for Beyond Scared Straight when we did it. Oh, yeah. That's why her name's familiar to me. Got it. Yes. Okay. And um, she's moved on to now produce um, TN Tomorrow. And so so now that it's advertised on, on the Glee Project as well, um, I guess it somehow correlates the fans of this show to that show. So, mm-hmm. hey, you know what? Go check out that show. Help out our friend, Jenna Singer. She's yeah. a producer. She's a great friend. Um, and if you're in the market, uh, she did Beyond Scared Straight, and we also covered it, and you can listen to her views on certain episodes that we did for Beyond Scared Straight. Yeah. So, and uh, once again, congrats to, well, I guess both Michelle and Tammy. For well, being now after it's, it's Tammy's month. Shouldn't we say that her month is August then, so, so she can have the whole month? Well, she does have <laughs> August she, to, to, uh, bask to bask in the, in the glory, glory, right? Right. But uh, the but work was done in July, so right. So she's after buzzing month for the month. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Well, out. How do you we've make only it? done it two months. We're still yeah, again working so out new. the glitches. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but and uh, as always, we. I mean, this is the top. We're the number one rated. Number one. <laughs> we love the Glee Project fans. We love them. And yes. we please do write in with your questions or comments. We would love to talk about you specifically as well as we also talk about the Glee Project. So do call in, write in, let us know what you think. Yes, well, it's it's a little tough for um, them to call in because right now we're obviously not streaming live. So we do apologize for that. But um, we know most of our downloads have been through iTunes. So we know we're not really letting you down. In the end, so uh, so keep tuning in. And yeah. when when Tammy says "we," that's the all-encompassing "we." That's you. Give yourself a pat on the back. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so. for making the Glee Project number one on After Buzz. We're that's right. Buzz. And uh, when Glee starts up, we hope you'll join us for that after show as well, because obviously ah. you guys must be fans of the same. Yeah, thing. for sure. Anyway, any last words, Tammy? Um, just kisses out to my boyfriend Zach. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, and Michelle, any kisses out to no. Zach? No. Samuel, WTF? Stop hating gay people. <laughs> there you go. 
Fair enough. So we will uh, see you next week for the Glee Project. Yes, we will. From producers Kevin Undergaro and Phil Svitek, engineer DJ Jesse Janity, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. If you have questions or comments, be sure to buzz us at info at AfterBuzzTV.com. And you can find us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter by searching for AfterBuzzTV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzzTV or its owners or principals.